Welcome to my little trip down road testing memory lane. Um, the last video I did, all about the GSX-R 1000 uh, K5, um, had a lot of interest and a lot of comments, so thanks very much for all of those. Um, and it kind of just proves that uh, the Suzuki GSX-R 1000 and 600 and 750 uh, a much loved motorcycle. It kind of represents the, the pinnacle of the GSX-R journey really, which in the UK at least started in 1985 with the slab-sided GSX-R750 which was probably the first proper race replica superbike as we know it today. I mean you could argue some bikes before that were superbikes but that was really what you can trace back to being a proper superbike. Um, and then after the K5 and the K6 then kind of Euro rules took a hold of uh, the GSX-R and it never quite was the same and the competition raised their game as well. So um, yeah, I, uh, I actually got to ride my brother's bikes. We went out for a ride after I did the video. I went out on his, uh, that immaculate GSX-R 1000 K5 and his GSX-R 750 K9, which is the same as the K8. And I mean, we didn't ride fast because it's my brother's bike, I don't ride other people's bikes like I do road test bikes. I think I've said before really, when, when you're road testing, the bikes belong to manufacturers. So, you know, although you never want to crash, um, it doesn't kind of matter what happens if you do have a spill, um, other than you get hurt, which is why we don't crash. Um, but when it's actually somebody else's bike, you don't ride it anywhere near the same. And, and just riding those two bikes slowly was just, just phenomenal. Never, never, well, probably opened up a couple of times, both bikes, but um, it's a tough choice which one I choose. I think some of the, the upcoming questions uh, kind of go into that a little bit. Um, so these, um, thanks for asking questions, are all about the GSX-R. I'll do another video on general Q&As um, after this, but uh, I thought I'd take the time just to, well, lots of you have commented just commented on your favorite gsx-rs which is is great to see i think a lot of people wish they still made the gsx-r now um although in america they still do if you go on suzuki america's uh web you can find all the gsx-rs still they haven't stopped making them they just stopped bringing into certain countries um so yeah these comments are all going to be about the gsx-r gsx-r heaven so if you don't like gsx-rs switch off now all right, let's start with the first question. Jeff Lambert uh, says, hello Jeff, awesome bike. Uh, the road test, this is about the GSX-R obviously. The road test used to scare me. Some of the journalists said back then it was too much for the road and your license. I guess you're talking about the thousand there. Uh, and there were no dash cams, ANPR back then. Um, and some said for the row, the GSX-R 750 was better. Did you agree? Well, I think if you ride either 750 or 1000 on the road flat out, you're gonna get into trouble with <laughs> speeding. Um, so really one isn't more um, uh, kind of kind to your license than the other. I think a lot of the journalists prefer the 750 because I don't know, how do you say this? There's less, I mean, this is a very thing I'm gonna say about the UK at least. We're very interested in kind of maybe showing we've got the biggest and the best sometimes. So, you know, some riders might go towards a thousand, even if a thousand really isn't appropriate for how they ride or where they ride or their experience or whatever, but they just want a thousand and that's fair enough. You know, you can have the biggest and the best, there's no crime against that. Um, but I think when you're testing bikes, and the ego isn't there really, unless you go to a motorcycle launch, sometimes the egos run a little bit wild. Um, but uh, yeah, you're just, you're just testing the bikes. And the GSX-R 750 is a nicer experience because you can get more out of it. It's more involving. You're kind of, you're closer to its limit. Not that, most journalists could ever get to the limit even of a GSX-R 750 because it's such a beautiful handling bike and endlessly fast. I mean, we tested a GSX-R 750 at Nardo, uh, the L1 version, which was a few years old. It was one of Pirelli's test bikes, which had been well ragged. Um, that did a true GPS 
um, indicated 182 mile an hour, which at the time was faster than a GSX-R1000, where there was a gentleman's agreement between the Japanese that they'd restrict their bikes to 280K, which was something like 170 odd. Um, so yeah, back then in the sort of, what year would that have been in? Like 2013 or 14, something like that. A GSX-R750 was faster than a thousand. Um, but anyway, yeah, so the 750s are kind of preferred by uh, a lot of people just because they're more involving. You can you can get more out of them because they haven't got uh, such big engines and such big wheels, like fat wheels. They've got 180 section at the back instead of a 190 or sometimes a 200. They're much more nimble, they're much lighter, um, and they're much more fun, they scream. So a 750 is kind of the, the best of both worlds. You've got the grunt getting close to a thousand, so you don't have to be dancing on the gears to main, maintain momentum. Um, but it's involving like a 600, it, you know, it, you can rev the bejesus out of it. And uh, it, obviously that's very exciting. And the exhaust notes on GSX-Rs are just, they're just raw, they growl. There's that kind of hollow mechanical evil din that they make. They're just, they're just amazing. So yeah, for a lot of people, um, the GSX-R 750s are better. I think on track, you could probably go faster on a thousand, but only for a smaller amount of time because eventually they tire you out and they tire their tires out. Whereas a GSX-R 750, you can just ride fast all day like a Duracell bunny. Yeah, the, you know, even, even today, I'd love, a track prepared GSX-R 750. I think that would be the ideal track day bike and it would keep up with thousands easily. Maybe not down the straights, but um, it wouldn't be far behind. So thank you very much for your question, Jeff. So the next one, Motomar83. How much do you love the GSX-R line? I rode the 23,000 at Daytona 200 at Suzuki's demo day. Uh, and it is a very special motorcycle, very powerful and super nimble to control every inch of the front, every inch of the front wheel is very controllable and ridge chassis. I really enjoyed it. The engine didn't push as much, but it did feed me plenty. <laughs> well, thanks very much for that. I mean, how much do I love the GSX-R line? I absolutely love it. Obviously you can still, you, you've ridden one there in America still, you can still buy them. It's a real shame that um, Suzuki discontinued the GSX-R1000 um, in the UK anyway, in Europe, because of Euro 5 and 4 regulations. Um, although when it came out in 2017, the most me recent model, there was a slight sort of air of disappointment um, because, the, you know, 2017 was the, the days of the, the, the S1000RR was still dominant, the Aprilia RSV4, the Panigale, um, that would still be the V-Twin by then, the 1299 uh, Panigale. Um, and all of those bikes had just that little bit more tech, a little bit more power. And the GSX-R kind of felt a lot like a K5, which was slightly modernized, but it had ABS on it, which was really intrusive, which is a bit disappointing. We rode that bike around um, Phillip Island at its launch and you had to take the ABS um, fuse out, so the ABS didn't come in all the time. Um, it never really scored that highly in group tests, but I ran uh, one for a year as a long-term test bike, and it is just a fantastic road bike and a very easy uh, bike to ride fast around the track. Once you've sorted the brakes out, they really fade as well. That seems to be a GSX-R trait. Um, but the electronics were pretty decent, and um, yeah, it's a real shame that it didn't really carry on with that or just make it a little bit sharper. Um, but it was a, a great bike. I had a lot of fun on that bike. I did loads of track days. I rode it around the Nürburgring. I rode it all the way to Aragon racetrack. <coughs> did, then did a, an endurance race on a Suzuki Katana, Team Classic Suzuki, a four hour endurance race, which um, started in dusk, went into night, which was just fantastic. One of the most amazing experiences I've ever had on a bike. And then the next day rode that GSX-R1000 all the way back home again. It was just, just amazing. I mean, GSX-Rs, I bet everyone's got a GSX-R story, whether it's their own bike or bikes they've seen or, or friends' GSX-Rs. They're just, there is something very, very special about them. And it is a real shame that um, they don't bring it in anymore. But thanks very much for your question. Next is, um, 
Stephen Chapman, great video. I had three GSX-Rs in my time. Wish I'd kept one now. What possessed Suzuki to discontinue this icon? Well, like I say, they haven't actually discontinued it. They still make it. They just don't bring it into certain countries because of Euro rules. We um, actually did, we went, went to visit the Suzuki factory a few years ago. Um, we did the launch of the Suzuki Katana, like the latest generation Suzuki Katana. And one of the things we did was to visit the factory and the museum. It's very interesting that Suzuki didn't really, when you visit their museum, it was full of old kind of, cause they started off like weaving equipment and stuff like that. There's a lot of history there. There's a lot of stuff to do with their cars, but all their motorbikes were just crammed in a little corner in a room. It's like they're not that bothered about making bikes. Um, you know, you'd have thought there'd be every GSX-R there and every RGV and every RG. And, you know, there are examples of all the bikes and there were some race bikes floating around. There's a Schwantz bike, Pepsi bike and some MotoGP bikes. But yeah, it just seemed like they're not that fussed. And it's kind of been shown now. They pulled out of all the racing, haven't they? Um, and stop making or stop bringing in GSX-Rs to certain countries because obviously they don't think it's viable to spend all that money euro fine them when li literally they'll send a, sell a handful of bikes so but yeah we went to the factory and uh, saw gsxrs being built gsxr thousands just amazing just seeing them all on the production line the factory it sounded like being in the middle of a an arcade game there's all these sort of um like arcade game noises and and tunes going but every tune and noise represented a different um kind of aspect of the the production line so if a certain bleep went it meant everything was okay if another sort of tune went it meant everyone had to stop or you know that kind of stuff it was a really surreal environment and um when the production line was just going along like this the suzuki um factory workers all have to work to a certain pace like a doom, 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 doom. They, they're tightening the, the heads and doing up the wheels and doom. Do, 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 do. so they don't go too fast or too slow can you imagine the people in the old british Leyland factory doing that um and then when this production line stops if there's a problem they all down tools and they stand back from the bike with their hands beside this uh down that beside them um their hands down beside their sides um yeah, and they, they sit there patiently waiting for the production line to start and then you hear this Super Mario music again and it starts again. So absolutely fascinating. Um, but yeah, thanks very much for your question. Right, next question is... Uh, 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 this is from the Missenden Flyer. Hello there. Right, these bikes were before my time, G6Rs. I didn't start riding seriously until 2011, so my knowledge of bikes before then is very limited. I hear so many good things about the GSX-R1000 and 750, but something that has always flummoxed me is why do knowledgeable people like yourself, or I don't know about that, refer to them as K5, K6, etc. Was that a manufacturing production code somehow relating to the year perhaps? Sorry for what may seem like a daft question, but I know you'll know the answer. Well, thanks for asking, listen to the flyer. Yes, it's a very strange phenomenon though. Um, we've always, I suppose since the K, K1, GSX-R, 600, 750 and 1000, <clears throat> or even before that, the Y model, I think Suzuki's have always been known by their year code. So in the, the 2000s, the, the K1 was 2001, K2, 2002, etc. And then in, 2000 and 2010 it, it changed to the LO and then 2011 L1 blah 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 so journalists call GSX-Rs by their code names but when we're at motorcycle launches no one ever talks about the model code um, it's literally just the 2022 S1000RR or the 2013 MT07 or whatever but what seems to happen, what I've noticed is, as these bikes kind of disappear through the mist of time and they become kind of, especially the special ones, you know, RGV 250s and R1s and, you know, the icons, 
once they kind of start to develop a following and people start needing parts for them, all of a sudden the code names spring up. And I look at these code names, I haven't got a clue what they are, but they're, you know, they're the preserve of the, the biking or the, the proud preserve, preserve of the biking anorak. So, you know, I used to have RGVs when I was younger, you know, they're called V20, VJ22s, VJ23s. A friend of mine called Paul Berryman, who's just a Yamaha aficionado. He knows all the code names for all the R1s, as I'm sure a lot of people do, but I haven't got, I haven't got a clue. So I think from a journalist point of view, it's a very Suzuki thing when you uh, call them by their code name, but it's, it's pretty cool. I think, you, I think once you know the code name for a bike, you're in a very sort of specific, exclusive club, aren't you? So anyway, thank you very much for the question. Next. Rod Fernandez. Hi Rod. Great video. Thanks Neasy. It'd be great to see you ride it on the track and compare it to modern bikes. I bet you'd still be fast on it. Well, thanks very much for the, the question. Talking about the GSXR 1000 K5. I raced one for two years um, and yeah, it was, it was a phenomenal experience. I raced it at the Benzie Power Bike Championship. I think I finished uh, maybe top top two or three in the championship for a few years in a row. And that was using that bike on the road as well. So Thursday night, I'd strip it down, I'd rebuild it as a race bike, shove it in a van, go to a racetrack, um, and then Sunday night, come back home and then turn it back into a road bike again. And I think I had that down in about two hours. One time I came back from Cadwell, turned it into a road bike and then rode down to the Channel Tunnel and then continued on to Lake Como which was just, you know, that just shows the versatility of that bike, doesn't it? Um, they just keep going on. I mean, as an aside, I've just done a tire test with uh, Ride and we used the GSX-S 1000 GT, which has basically got that engine in, hasn't it? And we were just pounding out the miles, testing tires, and the bike just takes it. The bike just goes, it starts, it goes, it doesn't give you any trouble, and then that blends into the background while you worry about testing the tires. Um, so, yeah, they're phenomenal bikes. Um, I think if you rode one today, it would still be fast. Um, you'd still be fast on it. I think it's, you know, it wouldn't be such an animal as a, a modern thousand because once you start getting past 200 horsepower, those bikes become animals and that's why you need traction control and wheelie control. You don't need that so much on the GSX. So it's relatively easy to ride. Um, but actually riding one today, the, the problem is, is you would have to ride somebody's pride and joy around the track, wouldn't you? Um, and then, like I was saying earlier, when you're riding somebody else's bike, you don't want to ride it as hard as you really can because you don't want anything to happen. Um, if you like throw a GSX 1000 K5 at a tire wall, you're faced with a difficult conversation, number one, if you survive it, and then number two, trying to find the money and the parts to make it good again. So. Yeah, the irony with testing older bikes is that um, A, also you're testing the, the, the condition of the bikes. We test a lot of used bikes sometimes. And, you know, you, get, you, you test what you can get your hands on, which aren't always going to be as well prepped as a brand new press bike from a manufacturer. So, you know, the suspension might be really old or the linkages or the bearings might not have been greased or whatever. So you're not really going to get a true representation of what that bike could be like or should be like. So, you know, if someone was to say to me, okay, we've got you a GSX-R 1000 K5, it's in good condition, we're going to take it to Brands Hatch for you to ride, I'd say thank you very much and I'd enjoy it, but I wouldn't be able to ride it as hard as I used to my race bike because I'd be too worried about A, the condition of it, and B, um, I wouldn't want to crash it and I wouldn't want to yeah, destroy someone's pride and joy, like I say. So. Yeah, that's kind of one of those things. It's more of a sort of a hypothetical sort of dream scenario if you ride one of these old bikes. And I know, is it Revzilla? Did a G6R1000 versus a Panigale and the Suzuki came out really well. Um, but I don't know, uh, I don't know the full details of that. I don't know whose G6R that was and uh, how, how hard they rode the bikes. But um, I mean, everyone mentions that test. I've watched it as well. It's a fantastic test, so yeah. Maybe um, Suzuki vintage parts. Maybe they could build a brand new one and uh, let us test it. It's just an idea. Anyway, thanks very much for the question, Rod. Right, Ankit. 
Hello, mate. On easy, do you prefer the K5750 or the K5000? I've had a K3750, Barry Sheen colors, very nice, uh, for nine years, which I absolutely love, but I want to replace it with a K5. Does one go 750 or 1000? Very good question. So the K5 isn't that much of a step on from a K3750. It's kind of an evolution, whereas, I mean, those K5s, it'd be a K4, wouldn't it? K4. K4 and K5 are the same, and then K6 and 7 are the same, and then K1 to 3 are the same. So it is, a, it is an evolved 750, and those early 750s of that decade, obviously they go back a lot further, were probably the lightest of all the 750s, the lightest and the most pure and the most raw, and the most fun. I mean, they look a little bit dated now. They're quite angular, aren't they? With really long tail units where you've got little stubby tail units now. But um, I wouldn't, if you've already got a K3750, I would just maybe spend the money on, you know, maybe putting some nice suspension on it, um, nice tires, nice brakes, that kind of stuff. Um, do you go for a 750 or a 1000? It's a really interesting conversation, um, discussion because when I rode my brothers the other day, we were swapping from bike to bike. I was helping him set up his suspension because they were previously owned. The bikes had just, <laughs> someone had just wound everything up. Must wind suspension up to go faster when that's not really the case. You've got to soften everything off. You want to make a bike as soft as you can get away with it for grip. Um, yeah, go stiff on the track, but even on the track, you want it plush. So we ended up winding a load of compression off and a little bit of preload and the bikes were really nice. And I was asking myself that question, which would I have? And to be honest, just at riding at normal speeds, they both felt very, very similar. They both got a lot of torque. They're both very, very light. I think I would personally have a 750 just because like I was saying before, you, you can get more out of it. Um, and it's a little bit more involving. And it will even, it's a hooligan. You can clutch that bike up like in second gear wheelies, change to third and fourth or whatever. They're, they're fast bikes, they're fun bikes. So I'd maybe have a GSXR 1000 for show and a GSXR 750 for go. <laughs> but thanks for your question. Right, next, some Jamie's Journeys. Uh, great video, thanks, well thank you. Uh, question for the next one please. In a few, quite a few videos you rave about the GSXR 750. I'm currently riding a CBR 600RR and want to move up, ideally an R1, but the GSX-R 750 has also crossed my mind. From your ownership, can you give the pros and cons of the 750, including what your experience of reliability was like with it? How many miles did you rack up on yours? Well, 750s. Like I say, I'd have a 750 over an R1, just because they're more fun, more involving. Um, better on tires, better on clutches, better on brakes. The, um, I've ran two 750s as long-term test bikes at MCN. Uh, one was a K8 and one was an L1. And on both of those bikes, zero reliability problems. They're just bulletproof those engines. Um, maybe not the best made in the world, but more than acceptable. When they're new, they look fine. They just, the, the paint's quite thin. So you get more stone chips maybe than a normal bike. If you ride it through bad weather, which you do when you've got a long-term test bike, you just use them every day because the idea is to, you know, put extended kind of usage into them. You don't just use them on sunny days. You want to see if, how durable they are, how they stand up to all the conditions. So, you know, riding them through bad weather and everything, some of the bolts fur up, but there's nothing fundamentally wrong with the reliability. They're absolutely bulletproof. They're fantastic. And I've racked up well over 10,000 miles on each of those two bikes. Big trips on them. I think I did a trip to Sardinia on the, the K8. Um, trips to the Nürburgring, Spain, Italy, all over the shop. So the reliability is superb. And the comfort's pretty good. The bars aren't too low. I'm six foot and um, the, the, yeah, I wasn't really crunched up. They've got adjustable foot pegs, the later ones as well, three stage adjustable, so you can put the pegs low. Um, and all I, did, all I did to those bikes was just put one tooth um, smaller front sprocket on just to give it a little bit more acceleration at the expense of top speed. I mean, it still does 170 odd, so you're not really missing out there. Um, so I don't think they've got many 
cons that's just all pros I mean if you're really tall they might be a little bit cramped and um, they're not going to be as comfortable as an adventure bike or a naked bike you know like a naked bike probably feels faster because you've got more impression of speed a fared GSX-R is like all sports bikes they don't really feel like they're going even at 80 mile an hour you've got to get the you know proper wind in your hair to get an impression of speed on the road um, but no, this, I can't think of any pros at all. I'd, I'd still love one. I'd love a K8 or a, an L1, ride it on the road. You know, when I was riding my brother's the other day, it does feel a little bit old fashioned in that the, the riding position is quite narrow. Clip-ons used to be really pulled in back then, whereas now they're almost like motocross bikes. You know, if you ride a, oh, as you do, ride a world superbike, like you ride Johnny Ray's bike, it's almost got flat bars. My race bike's the same just because they're riding styles are, are so different so i think if you were to find a mint g6r 750 um you know and you weren't too tall i think that would be uh that would be a really good buy i'd have one of those over an r1 maybe i'd have a cross plane crank r1 over that 15 onwards but they're so uncomfortable so uncomfortable rock hard seat it's like you're doing a handstand on the the clip-ons so yeah yeah get get the 750 you won't regret it. Thanks very much, Jamie's Journeys. Right, Rage Rider. Great vid, very enjoyable as ever. I know you love the G6R 750, as do I. Out of interest, do you think there's still a place in the modern market if Suzuki were to bring it back, especially with the absence of the G6R 1000 now? now. Seems a no-brainer to me. Well, thanks, Rage Rider. I mean, like I say, they just don't bring them into, into Europe anymore. They still um, sell them elsewhere. Um, and I suppose in a way Suzuki do still make a GSX-R 1000 um, or 750 in spirit. You know, the GSX-S 1000 is, um, is basically an old K5 engine in a mo more modern chassis, set up and base chassis. The old GSX-S 750 was a sort of an evolution of the old 750. The GSX-8S they've just brought out as a parallel twin, so it's not really the same thing. So you could still get modern versions of GSX-Rs and they're more kind of in tune with the way people ride now. Um, you know, sports bikes we've spoken about in previous videos have kind of died a death really just because most riders are kind of older. They don't want to be crunched up with clip-ons and, and high pegs. They want more, more straight bars. Um, but I think if Suzuki made a GSX-R 750, what they'd need to do, my... My dream 750 would be a GSX-R 750 L1, maybe with just slightly taller bars, not much, and pushed out a little bit so they're not as clipped in. Um, maybe different styling to mimic their last year's uh, MotoGP bike. Multiple race winning <laughs> MotoGP bike. Why on earth did they stop? Um, and they wouldn't really be need much else other than that but i don't think it would sell because you know we've got so much choice now all the technology isn't just in sports bikes like it used to be it's in it's in adventure bikes it's in naked bikes it's in touring bikes it's even in cruisers you know i rode a, an indian sport chief the other day and that's got traction control that's got rider modes that's got fully adjustable suspension it's got brembos so you know you don't have to have a sports bike for the latest bells and whistles now. And I just don't think there's the appetite anymore for, for a sports bike. Um, I think if more younger riders came in, then maybe that would be the case. But a lot of younger riders are riding retros and stuff like that. They like the style. So it's a very sad situation that bikes like the GSX-R 750 don't exist anymore. But... I think if Suzuki were to build one, well, I'd, I'd buy one, but I think, I don't know how many more people would. Would anyone, would you still buy a GSX-R 750 if they sort of brought in a new and improved one? Um, yeah, let us know in the comments, but thanks very much for your comment. Right, Rich Jixa, great upload. Recently got uh, back into biking after eight years. Previously owned an R1, GSX-R 600, GSX uh, ZX-R 600, etc. Just purchased a K5 GSX-R 750. Good choice. Low miles, good condition. Not been able to ride it as much as I'd like due to the time of the year. What's your opinion on the bike? 
or like I say, the K5 750, one of the better 750s, one of the lightest, one of the most pure. Um, if you're gonna just ride it on the road, the only thing I would do to it is what I did to my long term is we'd put one, one tooth smaller front sprocket on it. I'd put good tires on it, good sports tires. You don't need to go sort of the track day route. You don't really need um, super courses or anything like that because the bike doesn't really have the power to to need that in, with modern tires because modern tires are sort of even sports touring tires now are mega grippy. But if you've got good quality sports tires, you know, stuck there on like Metzler Sport Sporttech M9 or something like that, that, that level of tire, um, maybe did something about the brakes, you know, treat yourself to some proper pads, proper brake lines, proper fluid, even a Brembo master cylinder or something like that. You wouldn't need to do a lot else to that bike. You know, just leave it standard and just enjoy the fruits of uh, Suzuki's labor there because it's just an amazing bike. I'm jealous. Thanks very much, mate. Uh, Markelin, I think we've spoken before. Hi Michael, you often talk about how small a modern sports bike, so I wonder where for instance the GSX-R 600 or 750 from around 200 and, uh, 2010 is more spacious. I'm six foot two and I'd like to try or find one. Not silly powerful. Uh, that could more reasonably fit me for some track experience. Thanks, bye. Well, I don't think they're more, thanks for your question. The more recent GSX-Rs are any roomier I mean, Japanese bikes are quite cramped anyway. GSX-Rs are no exception. Um, I'm six foot with dodgy knees. I always find Japanese sports bikes quite difficult, especially like the modern ones. ZX-10s and Fireblades, I just have to ride like Daffy Duck on the pegs. I just can't get my toes on because I can't bend my knees enough, which is one of the problems. Um, the only thing I would say, if you're gonna do um, sort of track days and fit track day body work. You can, get, you can get seat units with taller seats, which will give you more leg room. And the standard foot pegs are adjustable three way, so you can put them on the low setting. You can get rear sets as well, that will lower everything. So, you know, there are ways to make those bikes roomier, um, but the later GSX-Rs are no different really in their sort of, you know, their, their handlebar to seat to peg triangle. They're about the same, as is like the latest G6R1000. That's pretty similar as well. But yeah, there are ways to make the bikes more spacious. I mean, for my S1000RR race bike, for example, I've got a, I've got a seat unit on there that makes it feel like a, a GS touring bike. I've got loads and loads of leg room. I've got really wide bars. And it is just, you know, if it wasn't for the fact it had bugger all steering lock and uh, it ran like a bag of nails at low revs because it's so highly tuned, you know, that would be a brilliant road bike in terms of its riding position. Absolutely love the riding position. So, you know, there are ways to make these bikes more spacious. So thank you very much for that. Uh, Mark Fagan. Hello, Mark. You've mentioned the K5 GSX-R1000. The gap between K5 and the other bikes was huge. Yep. The GSX-R from 01 to 06 was the best litre bike for five years running. Absolutely. Got to the point that numerous testers of the, of the bike did not want the GSX-R to be top dog yet again. And they tried their best to relegate the bike to the second or third, but in the end they could not say this bike is better than the GSX-R. They got their wish in 2007. Damn thing has a pipe on each side. Well, <clears throat> yeah, I agree. The, the K5 and K6, sort of was the the pinnacle of that gsxr run i think now there's an, there's an argument to say the k7 k8 it's just as good a lot you know once you take those big heavy pipes off they make more power they did really well in racing still but i think in terms of purity you know the k5 and k6 are definitely definitely the pinnacle we tested those various group tests as did a lot of magazines I wouldn't say that none of us wanted the GSX-R to win. I think we're all genuinely kind of uh, excited about it, to be honest. It was just, you know, it was kind of a feel-good time where Suzuki were doing what Suzuki was supposed to do. They were making amazing GSX-Rs. They were inviting us on launches where you'd have like an hour-long technical presentation where they'd go down to the absolute nth degree telling you how many grams they've shaved off this bit and that bit and how that bit's more free-flowing and that bit. Oh, it's just amazing times. Um, in 2005, it wiped the floor of all the thousands, the R1, ZX10 and the Blade. It did the same thing again in 2006. 
but then I think not only was the K7 GSX-R1000 not quite as pure, it started to face tougher competition. So 2007 was the year of the R1 when it went from 20 valve to 16 valve. That was really dominant. Uh, that one MCN's uh, super bike of the year. Um, like I raced one of those for two years as well, three years actually. There were the days where super bike tests were so important. When a given super bike would win, you'd get loads of comments on say YouTube or social media about how you were biased. So obviously, you know, the, the fans of other bikes were a bit miffed that their bike didn't win. So I used to get accused of uh, getting brown envelopes from manufacturers for choosing a certain bike that would win. But then I'd get accused of whether it's a BMW or a Honda or whatever, which obviously it just doesn't happen. There's no, no brown envelopes flying away and there's not, not even any pressure from advertising. You know, people say, oh, you only chose that bike as the winner because, um, you know, X manufacturer advertises in the magazine, but that's just not the case. One of the best things about working for MCN is that they're big and bad enough um, to stand up to manufacturers. If manufacturers get shitty and say, well, we're gonna put our advertising, MCN will say, okay, they'd stand by you. They'd stand by your decision, which is only an opinion. It's not saying one bite's better than the other. It's just your opinion. It's not an actual fact. Um, but anyway, yeah, so 2007 was the year of the R1. In 2008 was the, the stubby nose fire blade. That won uh, all the group tests and the GSX-R fell further behind. And then the new GSX-R 1000K9 came out but it came out at the same time as the first cross-plane crank R1, that won BSB, that's the reason for the showdown. It won WSB in its first, um, that, so Leon Cameo was the BSB champ, Ben Spees was the WSB champ, first go. It won loads of national championships. We rode it, um, I'm going way off subject here, aren't I, talking about R1s. We group tested it at Cartagena um, with all the other thousands and it was significantly faster. Even though it didn't make anywhere near as much power as the other bikes, which is I think ultimately why a lot of people didn't, you know, people who live by the dyno didn't really embrace that bike. Um, it's a bit big and heavy as well, but that engine was phenomenal. So the GSX-R fell further behind and then it fell further behind again with the 2010 S1000RR and it just kept, kept getting shuffled back and back and back. So, so yeah, um, those were the heydays, weren't they? The, the K1 to the K5 or K6, basically. But no, thanks very much for your question, Mark. And finally, Ben Rideout. Been loving these videos, mate. Thank you. Where does the GSX-R1000 K5 and 6 sit with you? Seems to have been developed, developed a real cult following. I actually owned a K6 uh, 1000 XTT race bike that used to belong to Ivan Linton. Absolutely loved it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean that TT bike must have been pretty special. We got to ride, I got to ride Guy Martin Superstock GSX-R1000, the relentless one, 2011 around the TT on a parade lap. And that was just amazing. You know, that's worth saying actually, when you ride I rode Richard Cooper's Superstock uh, G6R1000 in 2017, and that felt completely different to the road bike. I mean, it had only been out a few months when I've ridden it. It already had like Yoshimura kit electronics, factory, what suspension were they running? But like factory linkages for their suspension, it was just sorted straight away, and it felt nothing like the road bike. So even when you hear race commentators say that super stock bikes are like road bikes you buy from the showroom on a Monday morning, they're just not. Um, but um, yeah, when, so the GSXR are K5 and K6, that would have been the year of, um, I mean, that would have won super stock. I mean, I remember Paul Young in 2001 bought like a GSXR 1000 K1, did a few mods to it and wiped out and super, uh, wiped up, mopped up, wiped up. Which one is it? Mopped up. Wiped the floor with, that's it, <laughs> of its competition on that GSX-R. But um, where does the K5 and K6 sit? Um, you can only judge it by, you know, how successful it was back in the day. And it was very, very successful. It's still a great road bike now. 
Although, you know, if you were to take it on track with the latest and greatest G6R, uh, S1000RRs and Panigales, it, would, it, would, it wouldn't be as quick. It just wouldn't. Um, you know, you can jump on a, the latest S1000RR. We rode that Almeria lately. And that thing is like a computer game with slicks. It, you literally, it does exactly what you want. And the only limit is your strength to hold on and the concentration and how long the tires are gonna last. And even when the tires degrade, the sophisticated slide control and the traction control on that bike will just let you ride flat out still and electronics keep it all under wraps. So, you know, a GSX-R, a 20 old or nearly 20 year old GSX-R wouldn't compete against a modern super bike like that. But, you know, because it's, it's, it's gained such a cult following, um, you know, it's an, it's an icon now, isn't it? And if you were to park a GSX-R 1000K5 in a, a car park full of bikes, modern bikes, everyone would gravitate towards a GSX-R 1000, wouldn't they? Everyone would, would be reminded of what that bike meant to them back in the day. And, you know, think about the, the road test they read and the videos they've seen with it and all the rest of it. So, you know, we're, where does it rate with with me it's definitely one of the most iconic one of the most special thousands of all time and uh you know that and and also from a personal point of view you know that was sort of the road testing heyday really where sports bikes were important sports bikes were exciting and uh there were really fun days you know we did a lot of track riding we pulled a lot of wheelies we did a lot of skids and a lot of endos and that just simply doesn't happen now you know there's no appetite for that kind of uh, riding in, in, in print anymore, at least. Um, and a lot of the bikes don't let you muck about like that. If you want to pull wheelies or do skids on a lot of bikes, either, either A, they won't let you do it because of all the electronics, or, or you've got to stop and turn all the electronics off. And then, you know, whereas, you know, you can ride along on a GSX-R1000 and think, oh, I fancy skidding up to that roundabout now, and you can just do it. Or I fancy wheeling out of this junction or whatever. So. You know, they were, they were fun bikes, fun times really. And uh, I think bikes have got a little bit more serious now. They're not quite as fun. I think manufacturers are trying so hard to fill niches and, and keep everybody happy. That kind of, that decadence has gone. You know, even, even with Ducatis, I mean, Ducati probably produced the most extreme bikes in the shape of Street Fighter V4 or Panigale V4, but they're just so serious. They're 200 brake horsepower serious serious machines that like the Panigale can lap within a few seconds of a MotoGP bike if you're a MotoGP rider that kind of you know that carefree innocence is lost in a way and I think that's what the old GSX-Rs really represent you know they were kind of affordable they're exciting they look great they sounded great and yeah massive fan and that bike you know it gives me an excuse to see my brother a bit more now just so I can go down and look at his bike and and pat the tank <laughs> but anyway thanks very much for your question so that is all for this uh, rather extended gsxr question special um yeah i'll do some uh, normal q and a's uh, for my next video but um yeah keep those questions rolling in give us some more gsxr memories and um thank you very much for watching and i'll see you soon